Okay, we're beginning to set seawall. This will be a cap over log. It's always a nice moment when that takes place. I'm trying to get the center of the balance of the weight. Sometimes you can measure, but one end can actually be heavier than the other. And so Dan is getting the center of the weight. That's pretty good, Dan. It's good, it's really good. Nice long one has one splice right in there. Once we put the angle iron in, that will help to stabilize everything. This is always a nice moment for me when I see a log over an opening. Dan did a great job. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I appreciate this fella. Okay, we're getting ready to set a wall. It'll be in three pieces, It'll be two splices. And uh, David's coming up with the with the AL log. It'll be two logs on either end, and we'll put the splice in the middle. Seven AR coming up. Got it, boss. Yep, I got you. Yeah, just we'll do it with the boom. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah that was my bad. <laughs> Looking good here. Yeah, I got you. Looking good here, Dan. It's twisted. Uh, it's twisted. Hold 
Yeah, it's leaning in quite a bit. All right, you're pulling me out. Hang on a second. All right, Dave, come give us a little bit of slack. Nope. Careful. I'm still leaning in. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, it's, it's that is it. It's pulling off the outside. Yeah, it boom in a little bit. Boom in just a little bit. Careful. Hang on. We're, we're, our logs are kicked out pretty good here, Dan. Underneath. I'm lined up good. Okay. Yeah, he can come on down. Come down. That's All good. Right. Okay, so we're getting ready to set 7D. Then we'll get 7B, and the entire seventh round will be up. The next round will have the floor joist in it. Uh, move out just a little bit. Dan's pretty good at giving the hand signals. I'm just hanging on to the log. David's pretty good on that machine. I've got the slack over here, Dan. Yeah. Yeah, I, I put that block up there to keep that from sliding out on us because it was really, really close. There she be. I probably failed to mention that these are the joists for the second floor. We have them all cut to length. They've been sanded. They've been chamfered on the bottom. I'll get down here where you can maybe see that little detail right here. I like to do that and three inches of this will pocket into the wall so right about here will be the from there back will be setting on top of round seven and I've showed you this before in videos where I put the little groove in the top with my little power planer and that lets the floor boards the tongue and groove boards set here if there's a little bit of a bump in the joist you'll have a cleaner fit from here to here and i always write the height and the width of the joist these will all vary and when i cut the pockets i can refer back to that I'll, I'll write all that down and have a chart where i could keep up with the sizes the widths of the pockets that i cut and this end you can see it's number three it'll be the third joist that we set and this end will be pocketed into a wall what we'll do and I've already got number five is the one that has the biggest crown to it. That will be in the middle. And then I gradually put the crowns that aren't as much to the side of that and kind of and graduate it down. I believe these will be plenty strong to carry the weight. The actual span will be 16 foot and 10 inches. 
the total length is 17.4. This is the chart that I made up. I just wrote what the sizes were on each end and like number one, this would be the size, the height, and the width, which will go to A wall. And this is C wall. And I'll go with this six and a half wide to cut the pocket on C wall for number one and all the way down through there. Now I do have one, it's on number three, that I'll have to cut a groove in the end of the joist for an electrical chase that goes up through there. The pocket actually came out where there is a hole drilled for electrical, so I'll have to provide an access on the end of the joist on that particular one. So I made a note of it so I won't forget it. I'm going to tip you over here and show you that this is the number one pocket. And I've got the size of it, the height and the width for the number one pocket. That I did that all the way down through there for the nine floor joists that we have. We're doing these joists, we're putting them on a two foot center. And I went down through there and laid it out every two feet. And that's my center mark. And theoretically, these are seven by 12s. They don't always come out that way. So what I'm doing, when I after I make this mark, I'll come on and set a head three and a half inches. And I'm working from this point back for the actual width. And I lay my square up there, as I've showed you before, to get my line all the way across. And then I come back with a framing square and I just cover the line. And I take my utility knife and score that. So when I'm cutting that with a chainsaw, it doesn't tear out past my line. And I can come back with a sharp chisel and go right to my score mark. We have our white line snapped back on, which is what I work off of with a square, not this particular square, but a full size framing square to get my, my lines for the width of the joist. And what we're doing, we're actually cutting this pocket three and a quarter inches deep. So I just lay my square up there and mark three and a quarter on either side and then connect the, the dots there with the line. And these two lines here, they're not square. You can see that they're, they're offset on both sides. So that makes us have a little bit of insurance when we set the joist in there that we're not going to be rubbing the sides. We'll just be touching right here. And this is what is what will be seen. Now I'll take my chainsaw and plunge just above this line right here. And I'll, I've got a, a torpedo level and I'll set on the bar to keep this going in as straight as I can get it. Now what I've got is the, the log is leveled back up on the horses, just like I would be working everything out. I always like to have a level on the, on the inside face of the log. And I've, I've got it leveled back up. All the joist pockets are laid out and they're ready to cut. I've already scored the lines. I took my squares I've mentioned before and I just covered the line and I take my utility knife and score along that. And that ensures that I'm not going to tear out past my line. So we're ready now to start cutting all these pieces out. And then we'll come back and we'll clean all this up inside. And I'll come back to my score line with a sharp chisel and clean that up to the, to the line that I've scored.
I've got a chisel here that's pretty sharp and I'm just kind of coming back and working my way right up to where I scored. The closer that you can cut with your chainsaw, when you get to where you can cut with a chainsaw like that, the less work you'll have to do with a slick or a chisel or hand plane. So I try to cut pretty close to the line and I don't have quite as much wood to have to remove. This makes it a little easier. I can take my framing square and just lay it right up there and check it. It seems to be good and straight all the way across. And I'll get this side. Okay, this is the, the pocket for the third joist that goes into seawall that I'll cut a groove in the back side or back end of the joist so we can still get our electrical up through there. We have a splice on the end of this on seawall. This will be the middle section of the log. It's got a splice on both ends. And I will do a video. I've had a lot of people ask about how do you make logs longer for a longer wall? Well, I will make a video specifically to show you how I lay out the splice and what you need to be aware of when you're doing a splice and the whole process of, of splicing a longer piece. I didn't have to do a lot of cleaning up here with the slick because I cut really close to the line here. But I'm just taking my slick and just kind of cleaning this up, just, just laying my square across there to make sure that I've got everything down to where it needs to be. I'll come back with a sharp chisel. You can kind of see that little bit of a score line right there. And I'll clean all that up all the way across. We're starting in to set round eight. Uh, this is seawall CR round eight. We're doing a double strap. We've been able to get by with three people. We can get by with one strap, but from now on we'll be using two straps and we're using a little bit of a spreader bar just made out of a two before and hanging off the fork. That gives me some leeway to swing it with David on the machine. I think this will work pretty good. I have a guy rope on it to guide it. We'll see if we can get this up there and get it set. I think it'll stay there. Boom out.
boom out little. Yeah, that worked fairly well. It's easier to set the logs up that have the notches so you can actually fit the notches and get them lined up on the center line with their string and then come back and put the splice in. This splice uh, it's a little over 20 feet long and it's pretty heavy and when you put all that weight together it makes it a little more difficult to take care of your notch adjustments that you have to do or fitting to get them plumb on the inside so we'll fit these two ends on on round eight eight cr and eight l and then we'll come back and put the splice in and fit it and peg it together Okay, we've got uh, A wall 8L up, and I'll show you what we had to do to AR. I've never had to do this to a log before, but this is something that we came up with hoping that it works. It's got all the joist pockets cut in it, and we had to put a strong back on there. I call it a strong back, but I'll show you what we've got going there. This is 8AR. It's completed and ready to go on the building. This has nine joist pockets cut in it. And with all of that wood relieved, we felt like we needed to do something with it in the lifting so that we wouldn't put any more stress on it that was necessary. So what we did, we had some rough sawed tuba 12s that were long enough and I put a tuba six on that and it screwed in from the back side pretty substantially all the way down through there. And then we came back and we screwed it to the log on the inside face. Now, when we get the log up there and get everything fit, then we'll be able to take this off and get rid of it. Oh, yeah, you're gonna have to boom back. I'm just there. Now, now you can go upstairs. Go ahead and go up on the floor. Just let it go. It's going to swing. All right, don't move. Yeah, I know it's got to go to the north. Yeah, just hold what you got right there. Just a little bit.
Easy down. Thank you, Jesus. Boom in. Woo-wee! I don't normally deviate from uh, information I give you in the, in the videos, but today, I want to take you down to a spring where we've been getting our water while we're here in the Ozarks. This is some of the best water I've ever drank. This spring has been running for many, many years. The neighbor put a pipe in there where we can actually fill up our water jugs. Pretty easy. This is some really, really clear mountain, Ozark Mountain spring water. We're in just a little bit of a hurry. We've got snow moving in the next few minutes. We needed to get water before the bad weather hit. Well, the snow has just started and it's coming on down. We may not work today.